Imagine we're holding this event in Iran. First of all, it would be considered illegal because the Interior Ministry refused to give us a permit for it. Let's imagine, though, that we decided to hold this gathering anyway. Imagine we're calling for a certain of our basic rights to be observed. We feel our votes in our presidential election have not been properly counted, and we want our voices to be heard. We're not violent, we're not carrying weapons, and we're not threatening the public order. But mind you, if you're a journalist, or a weblogger, and if you write about this event, you could end up in jail. And if you take photos or video, and if you take photos or video of this event and go home and put them online, you could be accused of fomenting propaganda against your government. So, this is illegal, this is illegal, and this what we're doing here today is illegal. But what happens next is not illegal. While we're gathered here, some men in plain clothes have decided they've had enough of this rally. And they're going to break it up. Not by nicely asking us to leave, but through violence, with tear gas, knives, batons, and maybe even guns. Many Iranians have been experiencing this violence and brutality firsthand over the past several weeks. Here's an account of one young Iranian after what was supposed to be a peaceful rally he attended in Tehran. Today I'm not feeling well. I inhaled so much tear gas that I can hardly breathe, and it burns. I'm completely bruised from getting beaten by batons. I've never seen anything so violent in my life. Peaceful doesn't mean anything here. Bullets were flying everywhere. I saw people getting killed. The plain clothes passage, he means the Iranian militiamen and vigilantes, were the ones who were shooting at the people. Here's another account. Here's another account from a university student describing a scene at the University of Tehran dormitories two days after the country's June 12th presidential election. Students were shouting slogans and demonstrating in the yard. Law enforcement forces surrounded the place and broke the doors, and plainclothes Basij agents attacked the dorms. Inside the buildings, they sprayed tear gas and attacked the students with batons and knives. Some of the Basijis also had guns and were shooting. At least three students died of their wounds that day. So let's get back to our demonstration. It has been violently broken up by plainclothes men, and some of us are taken to jail. You get to prison or to some unidentifiable location. You're not allowed to call your family and tell them where you are or where you think you might be. Maybe your family will figure out on their own where you are. Your father, or maybe they won't figure out where you are. Your father or mother, your daughter or your son might come to the prison gates asking if you're there and they'll be told there's no one here by that name. Even though you're sitting in a cell only a few yards away. Maybe you're in solitary confinement, or maybe you share a crowded cell with many other detainees. You will undergo several hours, maybe even days, of interrogation, most likely while you're blindfolded. Do you want a lawyer? Forget it. Not until your interrogation is complete. Your captors tell you a lawyer can't help you anyway. Besides, some attorneys get thrown in jail just for representing people like you. So when will you be free, do you ask? Only after you cooperate, your interrogators say. But what does that mean? It may mean you have to sign a paper that's blank on the top that says at the bottom, I agree with all the above statements. It may also mean you have to confess. But to what, you want to know? Your interrogators will enlighten you. You have been involved in a form-backed plot, they say, to overthrow the regime in a soft revolution. Or you have cons conspired with foreigners to create propaganda against the government. Or you're accused of inciting unrest and threatening what your captors refer to as national security. You argue, none of these charges against me is true, so why should I agree to any of them? Maybe because you're being threatened, or maybe because your loved ones are being threatened. 
Perhaps you are under severe psychological pressure or maybe even physical torture. 